Live, good morning, everybody. Hello, hello from Adelaide, Australia. Um, please jump on and say hi when you're on uh, so that we know this is working okay. I can't multitask. I'm trying to unlock my phone and look at the screen. It's not working. Can't remember my password. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to share this on uh, my pages just so everybody can um, jump on. So please say hi as you come on. Hey, guys. Hey, Rochelle. Hey, Jennifer. Great to see you this morning. Um, would you believe I can't find it? There we go. All righty. Yeah. I think we're good. We're good. Okay. Hi, everybody. Kristen, Tiffany, Roz. Oh, so good to see everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, so good to see everybody too. Hey, Kayleen, good to see you. Oh, friends, it's so good to uh, to be able to just sit here and see everybody. Hi, guys. Wow. Well, hey, Carly, good to see you. All right. Well, I am I am a little bit uh, speechless at the moment um, in some ways. I was saying to Kevin yesterday, uh, I feel like I went to bed one night and things looked one way and I've woken up the next day and the whole world has changed. <laughs> Um, but I'm speechless in a way that is not like, oh, my goodness, I'm fearful or whatever. I am speechless because I feel like right now we are in such a significant moment uh, of what God is doing and what he's about to do. Um, and so I feel like this morning that this broadcast is going to be really powerful. I feel like the Lord's really going to release some, some encouragement, some impartation um, and some confirmation to you guys in this, what can you call it, turbulent moment in the earth. Hey, everyone. Um, so God is doing something incredible. So I am excited about this uh, live this morning. And so for those of you that have, are familiar with my ministry and um, and with Matt's, you will have seen that we have done quite a number of these uh, Facebook lives before. But for those of you that may be joining and you haven't seen Matt before, this is my dear friend, Matt Beckenham. Matt, thank you so much for jumping on with me again. Oh, are you serious? Again, this happened last time when <laughs> I was doing a, a, a stream with someone and it just wouldn't show them. Well, what can we do? Um, let me see. Oh, hang on. <gasps> you, <laughs> uh, well, everybody, here you go. This is my dear friend, Matt. <laughs> yeah, can everyone... All right. Can everybody see Matt? Can you let me know? I can see him. Hey, everyone. Hey, Matt and Lana. Awesome. Okay, yeah. great. See, on my screen, I can see Matt all the time. <laughs> so I assume that everybody else can see him too. But anyway, I'm glad that um, uh, you can all see him now. Awesome. So, Matt, thanks for, um, for joining me on this. As you know, I just love doing this with you and just the way the Holy Spirit moves uh, between us when we do stuff like this. It's awesome. So thank you. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. And again, thanks for trusting me in this environment. Lana, you're awesome. Oh, thanks. It's a joy, seriously. Um, well, can I just ask you, look, most people that are commenting are like, hey, Matt, good to see you. In case there's people watching that are like, who's Matt Beckenham? Can you just give a bit of a rundown about who you are and your beautiful yeah. family? Yeah, sure. So, yep, I'm Matt. Um, I come from Sydney, Australia, and i married to Trish. Uh, we've just celebrated 30 years of being married, which has just Yay. been astounding, beautiful, brilliant, powerful, and um, just wonderful. Uh, I've got three brilliant uh, children. Uh, we've got three brilliant children, I should say, <laughs> and um, they're all adults now. So um, it's just we're in a new phase of life uh, doing that sort of stuff. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, like I'm a pastor of, of a Baptist church. I know, Lana, every single time I say that to yeah. you, people start commenting about Baptist people being non-prophetic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me just correct that uh, thinking. <laughs> <laughs> 
And um, anyway, over the side of the, the planet too, like in Sydney, there's just such a growing heart for hearing the voice of God. And and just one of the things that I love to do is help people to discover that God not only speaks, but that you can test it, that you can trust it. And I believe that any voice you can trust, you can love. And uh, this is our relationship. This is the place of hope. This is the place where the Father has designed us to operate from. And so that's kind of a bit of a window into the stuff that I do and who I am, who I'm married to, and awesome. just awesome to hang out in this environment too. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, what you're carrying, as I always say, the way that you carry the Father's heart and the revelation that you release is just so so pure and so just so inspiring and encouraging. So I am so, so thankful for you guys and uh, doing life with you guys. So you love prophetic Baptists. Awesome. <laughs> Yes, we exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guys, we're going to dive straight in. Um, and because uh, like I always say, I just love hanging out here with you guys. I could sit here all day and just talk yeah. to you. So <laughs> let's just dive in. Um, so, Matt, do you just want to start by just sharing um, what you were sharing with me before we came live, just what God has been putting on your heart? And um, and we'll just kind of flow back and forward. And um and then, yeah, I think towards the end, I'll share the the uh, the word God has given me yeah. uh, regarding what I was sharing with you. So, yeah, let's just dive in and see what he does, hey? That sounds like a plan. Cool. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, Lana, like you said at the top, we're in uh, unprecedented times. Um, like here in Australia over the last three months, 2020 has been nothing short of eye-opening and uh, we've gone from bushfires to floods uh, and now to a pandemic that's uh, stretching across the globe and people from all sorts are asking the questions as to what's going on, uh, how should we respond, um, how should we be interacting. I've heard all different kinds of responses from believers as to what is right, what is wrong, what is yes, what is no. And so when you have lots of different thoughts and processes, confusion often becomes a language uh, that we just need to learn to navigate that rather than just get lost in it um, yeah. because fear is a language all of its own. Yeah. And I don't know about you, and I, I just feel like that at times when you turn on the news, there are some articles that you read that you wish that you'd never opened your eyes to read and you're looking then for truth and you're wondering what truth looks like and yeah. And so often um, that that story, the, the boy who cried wolf at times, you listen to that and you go, okay, do I believe for this now? Should I prepare for this now? Yeah. Uh, and then our society has a voice of its own. And so as most people know here in Australia, we, um, toilet paper is yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you'll probably find more prophetic Baptists than you do toilet paper rolls uh, yeah. at, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's it's an irony, um, but strangely enough, I think that even God's speaking through uh, things like that uh, as well. And so uh, mm. when we interpret things in dreams and visions, even things about toilet paper are very interesting uh, mm. because I feel like the, there is there is junk that's been released right now. Yeah. And I just really sense that the Father is going to be doing something so profound. If He's already doing it yeah. uh, across the globe and, and he's calling for us just to, to press into that design place of his heart and just to listen for his voice yeah. and to start discerning what fear is saying and what confusion is saying and what the Father is saying as well. I, one of the, the key verses that the Father has in my heart right now is in 1 John 4, 4, where uh, John is so clear on the concept that the spirit who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. Yeah. Now, I know we're a long way away from the first century, from all that was going on at that sort of time, but fear definitely was a language of that season as well. Yeah. It was infecting churches. It was changing the way people did their lives. People were going into hiding. Um, but what it could not do was shut down the spirit of God because That's of the right. greatness of that spirit that is that is within, within us. Ah, I just feel like a bit teary. Mm -hmm. But the concept inside of that is that we need as believers to understand the gap between how far greater the spirit that is within us is from the spirit that is in the world. Mm. And the spirit that's in the world is seeking to steal, kill and destroy. And what's it seek to kill it? Uh, what's it seeking to kill, steal and destroy? Our relationship with the Heavenly Father. So we start speaking a language of fear rather than a language of faith yeah. or a language of love or grace. And I, I think they are such specific languages 
that at times as believers, we slip back into those places of going um, the what ifs or what's going to happen if or all those kinds of languages. And again, when we entertain the, the language of fear, we always seem to end up in a worst case scenario rather than a faith based scenario. That's and right. and uh, there is such a significant difference between the two at this point in time. Yeah. And so for me, like, what is the mandate that God's placed on the church at this time? And I feel like that mandate hasn't changed in 2,000 years. Yeah. I still feel it's straight out of the Gospel of John where Jesus says, love others as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. And in that sort of paradigm, we actually then discover what it is that uh, we are called to actually to do, uh, called into, and, and how to behave. Yeah. Uh, and so fear and panic uh, very much rested in emotional responses mm -hmm. that are... Um, due to the circumstances that we often uh, have around us. And again, this is a season and a time for us to be so familiar with the Father's voice and the Father's circumstances around us that we know that where he is, fear is not. That's right. And what we carry and like what you and I carry, Lana, as believers and any believer that's sort of logging into this, what you carry is so far greater than he is in the world that you then understand that you have an authority to change the atmospheres of the places that are around you. Right. Now, for us here in Australia, and I'm understanding it's all over the world, I was talking with a few people in Oklahoma yesterday, yeah. and I see Courtney there on the screen, um, and she she is talking about social, isolate, social isolate, isolation, is that how you say it, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the concept in, in that and being socially isolated, that's directly opposite about what the kingdom is saying. Uh, so we can be socially distancing, but we shouldn't be socially isolating. And isolation doesn't mean that we have to be in our homes trapped. Isolation and defeating it by like what we're doing right here. That's right. That's uh, I think um, uh, there was a major prophecy that came out at the end of last year about revival happening through social media. Mm. Um, and I, I remember sitting in, and listening to that and one of the, the girls that I work with, she is uh, such a fan. I think that was Sean Bowles that said that. And um, it's this concept that we're sitting in a place now where there's hundreds of people right now connected That's and we're right. not being socially isolated. We're actually right. being socially connected. That's right. uh, and doing so, we're allowing the spirit of the living God to connect us across the globe through people's hearts and lives by the very spirit that is within us and understanding how far greater. And so just to, just to know yeah. that the how far greater is the spirit of God than the spirit that's in this world, well, as far as the east is from the west, yeah. that's the capacity we need to start thinking from rather than fearing that that, that, uh, that gap is getting smaller and smaller. It's not. Mm. It, it never has. The yeah. spiritual blessings that the Father has called us all into are so far more profound than the curses that, that Satan is trying to speak against us. And right now, this is a season and a time for us to be connected, to be heart to heart, regardless right. of how we do it. Like uh, in Australia here, they're talking right now about limiting groups of 100. Mm. That does not stop us connecting from the kingdom of God. That's right. It does not stop us from finding other ways and alternate ways. I'm actually a believer that the next revival is going to happen at dinner tables. <laughs> it's going to happen in the place where we are eyeball to eyeball across from each other and we're just loving each other in just such a profound way that the kingdom of God will not be silenced by any uh, virus. It will not be silenced by any fear that we have going on. This, the, the revival that the Father's planned is inside of every one of our hearts in this feed right now. Yeah. Every single one of us carry the love of God. And That's one right. of the things I share with my church on Sunday is that in Australia they're talking about that eventually one in five people will have this virus. Well, the Spirit of God has told me through the Word of God that five out of five of us carry the Spirit of the living God. Mm, come on. And if five out of five of us carry the Spirit of the living God, can we understand then how exponentially greater our impact, our voice, our heart, our interaction, our love is? can actually be on this planet. And yeah. so when people talk to me about what is to come, well, my mandate hasn't changed. That's I'm so still good. loving the one who's in front of me, just as Heidi Baker would say, mm. uh, or even Dio Moody 100 years ago, love them into the kingdom one at a time. How do you do that by yeah. sitting with them and loving people, loving people well? So, yeah, that's right. kind of what's on my heart. Right? That's so good, Matt. And, like, you know, and that's the thing. Like, even over the past couple of weeks, the Lord, I've been hearing him say, don't change the subject, don't change the narrative, even though the narrative has changed in the earth right now where there's this crazy fear and panic narrative that's just being bombarded through so many different channels 
I, I feel what you're saying. Like that so resonates with me. The mandate hasn't changed. And right now more than ever, you know, we need to be those the people of God who are arising and shining. Like this is such an Isaiah 60, you know, and yes. and loving people, you know, and, and this isn't a time to cower back and, and hide in fear, but actually to partner with the Holy Spirit in ways to love people and to shine the light of Jesus and to be voices of hope. And, you know, this week I saw something on Instagram, I think I follow an account called Cultivate What Matters. It's amazing. Anyway, it's all about journaling and different things. But one of the girls on this um, on this uh, account, uh, she works for the company. She they printed out letters for the neighbors and wrote like letters that said, "Hey, you know, I know that it's really turbulent time right now and it's really fearful and there's lots of stuff going on, but hey, we just want to let you know this is our phone number and next time we're going to the shops, if there's anything that we can do for you or grab for you while we go down to the local supermarket, please don't hesitate to call." And I just sat there and I looked at it and I thought, "You know what? That is incredible. What a practical, amazing way to love and yes. you know and that was like you know a week or like or a couple of days ago in the us and like i know there's restriction laws and all that coming in but you know i was i was just amazed that in the midst of such a turbulent time just the creative ways that we can be reaching out and still connecting with people and loving people and i'm just thankful for social media hey like here we are matt we're sitting here in australia i saw somebody commenting from rome you know like god is greater yeah. right he's so much greater and um and I, yeah i just i really feel like this is such a strategic moment for the yeah. church right now um, I think that God is doing so much through what is happening, what the enemy meant for harm. You know, God is is turning for good. And and I really feel like there's a, I'm not going to go into it now, but there's a thundering from God. Like, you know, where where do you align? Like, what what do you believe? Like, this is really a time where we have to knuckle down and, and this is where the rubber hits the road, you know. Do I take the Lord at his word? He says, you know, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I choose to align my faith uh, with that. So, yeah, I think that's that's really powerful. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Lana. Like I think at times because we live in such affluent societies at times, um, Bible verses back up the lifestyles that we live at times. But when we come into these sort of moments where the world is shaking, our economies are shaking, uh, churches aren't able to meet, um, yeah. people are wondering what the next six months is going to look like. Yeah. Uh, this is the moments where truth becomes freedom. Mm -hmm. And if we can believe uh, in this kind of vein, then you, you're aligning yourself with uh, generations of people who have gone, you know what, there is nothing else left but to trust that God's actually got a word for me and he's speaking that word and I'm going to live my life uh, from that belief. Like the other day I was prophesying over a person and I asked them, do you receive this? And they said, can you just explain to me what it means to you to receive? And it's exactly like you were just describing. Can I align myself, my belief system behind the word that's just been spoken over me? Yeah. And, and this is the place of, of deep transformation. This is the place where hearts are revitalized and regenerated. And, and when we talk about revival, these are the kind of moments that we can actually sit in as believers and trustful. Yeah. And to know, like the Bible says, if we seek first the kingdom of God, that all of these things will be added to us. And what are these things? The yeah. things that we are so worried about right now, about having enough of or having yeah. a future or having an understanding of what tomorrow is going to bring. Yeah. Each of these things become a, a powerful reality that the apostle Paul found sitting in a jail cell. He said, regardless yeah. of all things, I'm sitting in a jail cell and I've worked out how to be content in God yeah. because his presence is so, so uh, powerful that has changed my whole atmosphere yeah. and again it's the all it is is the is the word of god just coming to life inside of our lives yeah. and the power of it is when the communities like this actually start speaking uh then then life is echoing and thundering from the kingdom of god and it's not this fearful place of oh no what's going to happen the, like the chicken with the sky falling i don't yeah. know if anyone's old enough to remember that story yeah. I am, yeah. but, it's this, <laughs> but it's that sort of place that we don't have to worry about that. And like so, so much of our worry is a fear of the future. Mm. And the Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He tells us he's the alpha and the omega. And we've been speaking and preaching that for years. Right. Uh, this is a season and a moment in time where we go, yep, 
I'm up for that. I may not understand all of it, but I'm absolutely up for that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's so such a right perspective and such a right word, I believe, for right now. You know, I was even thinking this morning and I was saying to Kev, you know, for the last two years, you know, God has been um, prophesying this word through me but also saying it to me, you know, Lana, no matter what it looks like, like no matter what things look like in the natural, like, are you all in? Like even if it goes crazy and things like, are you in a place where you're you're all in with what I'm doing? And that's what I feel like right now. We're in this place where the enemy's going crazy and there's all this turbulence and there's all this stuff that's happening and things are changing. We don't know what the next two weeks are going to look like, let alone the next six months. You know, our government and I'm sure other governments are talking about this, you know, going on for a while. And obviously we go with a different report than that. But in the natural, there's very much this whole thing of this, what we're looking at right now could could change things dramatically in the natural. And so there is, there's this fear, I think, that can easily entangle where it's the fear of the future and you know lots of people are losing their jobs like it's just it's not it's not a great time in the earth naturally but it's a great time right now in the earth for the people of God because this is where the church begins to rise and you know I was making my coffee the other day and of course the Lord speaks to me while I'm at my coffee machine right (laughs) if you know me (laughs) and all of a sudden I'm serious like his voice was so loud it funded I felt it through every part of me and he said Lana I am forging and forming the ecclesia and it was such a strong like like it's happening it's not coming I'm doing it right now in the midst of all of this shaking I'm forging and forming the ecclesia and there was this incredible invitation uh, like you were talking about, you know, receiving uh, the prophetic word of the person that you prophesied over to really align ourselves with what God is doing and what he's saying and yeah. the things that he is going to shift around, the things he's going to move, uh, you know, even looking at in the natural, like we've got some, you know, mega churches are having to, you know, shut down for a while and we've got, um, you know, like other churches closing, conferences being cancelled where, you know, we had a big trip planned to the US, we can't go anymore, you know, and so there's this place of you can almost be a little bit like, whoa, like I feel like a little bit nervous, but it's I believe it's an invitation right now. Hmm. I really believe there is an invitation from the Lord to go back to the garden. Yeah. I um yeah. Do you want to say something before I? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, As you kind of know, I'm actually writing a book on the Garden of Eden, um, and it's very much rested in um, the concept that that uh, the design, the original design, is what the Father is calling us into. Yeah. And it's like we've got all different kinds of programs and thoughts and processes of how the church is supposed to be, how it's supposed to operate. And the Father gave us one uh, thousands of years ago and and allows us into a place of understanding that this is his design. Yeah. And uh, when you said to me yesterday the simplicity of the garden, uh, there is such a power in that phrase because, again, people go, is it all complicated? It's all this, it's all that. It's... Loving people is not the complicated part of it. We as people at times make it complicated uh, and we as theologians at times make it complicated. No offence to any of the theologians out there, but often we can and we need to be really careful about some of that sort of stuff as well. (laughs) Sorry, someone's at the door. (laughs) That's the father at the door right there. We call that a divine interruption there. Yeah, that's that's right. how I teach it. And so it's, again, what does that mean? We go back and we start yeah. thinking about the very thing the Father just told us in that phrase, yeah. that loving people is not, not the complicated thing. Um, you know, when Jesus had disciples saying who's the, the best in the kingdom and who can sit in the left and the right, and James and John even had their own mum come and say, hey, Jesus, can you put one either, on either side of you? And yeah. Jesus decides that to put a child on his lap to show them what actual true relationship looks like. Yeah. And it's that place where um, it's that place where the concept of the kingdom of God allows us into that place of simplicity to know that he is already there and he is actually waiting for us. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think this is such an interesting time uh, for us in the kingdom of God to be, yes. to be as he has created us to be. 
Yeah. Uh, sons and daughters created in his image, yeah. living out his, his will. And what is his will? To love others as Christ has loved us, to bring heaven to earth, to show people the reality of the Father by the love that we share with one another. I just think it's so profound. And, it's, and for me, it's a simple thing of inviting people to sit at your table and understand the simplicity of our design. So good. That's so good. And, you know, you and I were talking a little bit about this as well before we came on live that, you know, even the simplicity of the garden, like here we're in the world where it's crazy and there's a lot of noise, but we come back to we turn aside and come back to that place of just being with him and being in that place of, of, you know, walking with him in the cool of the day, that's the place where I'm founded, I'm grounded, the place of my peace, you know, the place where I live from there and so then I can walk in the earth where there's it's tumultuous and it's turbulent but I'm not shaken, I can sleep in a storm because I know who's with me. It's that deep place of the garden. And um, it's interesting, you know, because I, I was saying to you, Matt, like when I was sitting with the Lord uh, over the last week and I, I constantly asked God, Lord, what's on your heart today? Lord, what are you saying? And uh, and I heard him say, it's time to come back to the garden. And I said, Lord, um, you know, what do you mean by that? Like I, I never want to assume. I'm just going to get it up on my phone here. Um, and, uh, and the Lord says to me, Lana, there is an invitation back to the garden right now. He said, this is a Selah moment. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting words. And so I went and I looked up the meaning of the word sila. And what can it mean? It can mean silence. It can mean pause. It can mean end um, or a louder strain. And as I was sitting with God, and I knew what sila means, but I'm a word nerd. So I just like to go and look up different, you know, I like to read Wikipedia and different things because God speaks to me through that stuff. Anyway, but when I... I read the word pause. I felt so strongly that there's an invitation right now upon the church in this moment, even if you look at it in the, the natural, right, there's this forced kind of, um, you know, quarantine and different things and, and life's looking different. I believe that the Holy Spirit is actually inviting us as his people into this moment of pause where we stop and we reflect I, I really believe that there's a moment right now for the days ahead for what God is about to do in the earth that we have to come to a place and lay everything again in front of him and go, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What does this look like? You know, what is, what, what's the mandate? Exactly what you're saying. You know, what is the strategy? What are you saying for my life? Because this is a divine reset that's taking place right now yeah. in the church, but also in the nations. And, and, it's, and it's a positioning for what is to come. Did God send the virus? No. But I believe that God is using what we're walking through in order to position the church. For mm. so long I've been saying, I heard the Lord say, ready or not, here I come. And I believe that we're in the moment right now where there is this weighty invitation from God to come back to the garden and to really make a decision. God, I, you know what, I, am I all in or am I not all in, you know, mm. with what? About to do because honestly um, things are going to keep shifting they're going to keep changing and I'm going to release this as a written word probably over the next couple of days but there is I believe in the garden place and everything that's taking place right now and this is I want you to hear my heart guys like this is not me saying God is sitting there angry and rah, right? But I believe that there's an exposing of the heart that is going to take place in the garden because like through his love right now mm. because we can't run we can't run with some of the stuff that we've had and I know you've been hearing me say this for such a long time but I was surprised by something and I wasn't going to share this now but it's been bugging me since we came on so I'm just going to share it but it will come out in a word over the next couple of days I'm sitting with the Lord and he says to me Lana he said, there are going to be some idols in the heart that are going to be revealed, he said, in this moment. He said, in the shifting and the changing, he said, and I'm revealing them so I can bring my people back to a place of being aligned and refined. And, it, and it's about coming back to that place of simplicity where it's all about Jesus. Like it's all about him. It's all about he is my first love. It's all about, you know, it, Everything that I need is in him and anything else that has clouded my heart uh, would would be removed. And I feel like there's this invitation to uh, repentance that's that's happening in the garden. One of the things the Lord said to me is if ministry is an idol, 
um, you know, in this, you know, in hearts. It's going to be exposed right now as things are changing. Churches yeah. are shutting down. You know, ministries are changing. Conferences are, uh, you know, being cancelled. So if there's any part of the heart that is uh, caught up in that type of stuff and it's an idol, or there's value or anything that's coming in those areas, God's going to expose it. Why? So he can heal it. Yeah. Uh, and so I just, I feel it really strongly that we're in this place of cleansing and purifying and refining. So, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to just really echo that too, because like here in Australia, we've just gone through a thing called the Royal Commission, which is uh, mm. the government uh, taking steps to weed out um, sexual abuse and things from the church. Yeah. And churches have been exposed um quite strongly in all of these areas and people are saying what's God doing what's he doing he's cleansing that's right he's cleansing to restore cleansing right. to heal and not just to heal communities of people healing people deep in those deep heart wounds that have yeah. been so poorly done by but this is what the father he's not here just about making your circumstances nice he's here about transformation he's that's here right. about renewal and this concept of what you're saying is tearing down some of the idols of our hearts. Mm. I think at times, even as a church minister, there's there's goals and there's thoughts and you have, mm. there's hopes and there's dreams. Yeah. And if they uh, transcend the concept of the mandate the Father has on our hearts, yeah. then you're right. We're setting up our golden cards once again. Right. And it's, again, it's moments like these for us just to stop, think, and that sell our moment. I love it. Absolutely mm. love it. Speak it again and again and again, Lana, because it's, that place of rest for the kingdom of God as well, that is necessary. Yes. This is not just a good idea. It is something that the Father has called us into. And like watching uh, major churches around the world go into these Selah moments, as they're saying, like I've got a friend who runs a church down in Melbourne. And it's quite a big church. And he was telling me yesterday that the creatives of his church are going bananas with new ideas of how yeah. to connect people. Wow. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so a stairway church down there in Melbourne is just doing awesome things about drawing people together creatively and the creatives are actually finding a voice. So, and it's a, I feel like that's been something that the Father's been placing on the church now for, for ages that he's restoring his creative voice. And so, so that good. even in Satan's plans or whatever we think that Satan's doing right now, there is glory that is flowing from it and it comes from the hearts of those who are called and know their identity and are now speaking out and speaking up. And again, I know, for, Lana, for you and I, it's just about us, and you've done run a course on it as well, it's, mm -hmm. it's helping every one of us know our prophetic voice, Yeah. how we hear God, and we're all different. We're That's all right. unique. We all carry something so beautiful, and it's why it's so important for all of us to find that prophetic voice, to speak from that place, because the yeah. kingdom gets richer when we're operating out of our design. That's so good. That's so good. And it reminds me of what I we were talking about before we came on about, you know, I was saying to you that, was it yesterday? Uh, oh, no, last week the Lord said to me, listen past the noise, Lana. And so I leaned in and the Lord said, what can you hear? And he answered me before I could even answer. And he said, Lana, it's the sound of reformation. Yeah. And that's exactly what I believe where we're at right now. Can you hear, like, can you close your eyes and listen past the sound of the second heaven and all the fear and all the stuff that, that's going on? Can you come to that place in the garden with me and listen to my heart? And when you listen to my heart, you will see and hear the sound of reformation, that things are shifting and changing. Like, you know, I just, you know, you're reading it. Thank you. My, uh, I've just finished my next book and part of my uh, what the Lord spoke to me in that book was, Lana, uh, the church is going back to the days of Acts and more. And it was this, this great word of his heart that we're going back to the days of Acts. Like, you know, look at it now. Like people are going to be meeting in homes and like it's just crazy. But it's that and more and the mighty demonstrations, the mighty acts of God, that and more. And so hearing what you're sharing about, you know, the creatives, like getting their voice and like this is really it, right? It like is. this is what we've been believing for. This is what we've been prophesying. This is what God has been showing. Is it possibly happening in a way that a lot of us are kind of like, whoa, okay, didn't <laughs> see it coming like that. But God is so much bigger. Yes. Right? And, and the way that I think right now, the way that he's moving, and it's going right back to what you are saying, Matt, that in the midst of crisis, in the midst of turbulence, in the midst of pain and everything that's going on, 
to see his move, like his the moves of his hand, the move of his spirit, the way that he's orchestrating everything to bring his church into this place of alignment. To me, I've been overwhelmed in the last couple of days by the love of God like the love of God for his church, like yeah. even where, you know, even where the areas where he exposes idols and he, he corrects and he disciplines is because of his love. Yeah. And we're in that moment now where he's positioning us and calling us because what does it say in Scripture? It says that the bride makes herself ready, right? There is a call upon us right now to make ourselves ready. And I want to say this to you guys, and I know you've probably heard me say it a lot, but really like, use this time wisely you know like really use this time with the lord to allow him to to come and do what he needs to do you know yeah. pray that prayer of psalm 39 you know god come and examine my heart in the light of your presence god do whatever you have to do in me right now in order to prepare me for what's to come because this moment this sila moment uh, God is going to not only bring deliverance and healing and realignment, but he's going to release to you greater strategy and revelation and impartation for th what he's going to do next, for what's coming, for what, for that next moment. And I just, I don't know, I can't shake this urgency in my spirit that we have to be people that are stewarding this moment really well. Yeah. yeah. I think too with that as well, like that's, and that's, I agree. I absolutely agree with that. Like it's such a, I love the way that you speak it out and share it because this is what the Father is is calling us back in, into relationship. Yeah. Anyone that loves you really, really well and you're not in relationship with, if they demand it, if they condemn you, then you're not going back into relationship. The Father, even in this season when the Father's calling us back to his heart, he's not using condemnation Yeah. because there is no condemnation for those in Christ That's Jesus. Right. We get that. We know that. And if God was going to start using that language, he would be changing his character. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore we can trust that condemnation isn't isn't part of that conversation yeah. if we can then trust that conversation is not part of his conversation then we can then trust the change and the transformation that's in front of us because so many of us are scared to change yeah yeah uh, and i think the older you get the more you get set in your ways and change becomes a scarier and scarier word uh, yeah. but it should not be when we have a loving god who does not speak condemnation nor shame nor guilt over us that's right uh, Everything he did for us in Christ lifted that stuff off of us. And yeah. now the transformation that he's drawing us into is one that is not bound by the circumstances of our world or our life or the fears that the media speak into us or mm -hmm. the worries about whether we have enough toilet paper at the supermarket. It's based in his language and his heart. Yeah. And for all the people on this uh, feed, you might think that you can't hear God or you don't know the voice of God, but you would be surprised to know that he is speaking to you in so many different ways and none of them are with condemnation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely none of them. Like one of the questions I was asked, Lana, I don't know if you get asked this a lot, is is God punishing the world by allowing these viruses to be released? And I know that even when the bushfires happened, uh, there was some um, prophet in America who was saying Australia has been punished for its sins mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And again, is that the loving heart of a father who declares that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? Uh, unless he's bipolar uh, or he has a split personality or he's got something wrong where he's actually speaking from two different personalities, then no, that's not his language. That's not his thought process. That's not what he does. He speaks to us life. He speaks to us fullness. He's not here to steal, kill and destroy from us. The Bible says that's the thief's job. Our, our job inside of that is to align with the Father's voice and the Father's conversation. And, again, change is a part of every one of our lives. And it's actually believing now that that change and aligning ourselves with him is a process that he has designed us for. And so to align yourself with that kind of transformation is your design is just working right. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's really awesome. And, and uh I often think of the, you know, the scripture that I think it's in Isaiah 55 and it says, you know, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. And um, and even last night I had a dream and that I won't go into it all, but the, the essence of the dream was right now there's an invitation 
to come and to know me and to know my ways and to know me um, in a way that you haven't before. And as things are changing, as things are moving, as things are shifting, you're right, you know, like change is not a great word, uh, mm. you know, for a lot of people. And there's areas of my life at, at times over the years where change has come and I'm like, oh, feel a bit unsettled. Um, but I, I just felt like while you were talking, Matt, that just to really just release to, to people that as you take this time aside with the Lord, that there's really going to be a, a revelation of his way as you are leaning in and you're leaning in in humility that's a real key like leaning in without agenda just leaning in to hear what he's saying and what he's doing I believe that there's going to be a really um, greater increase of revelation of of wisdom and strategy for what God is doing right now more than ever we have to be people that recognize the times and the seasons we have to be people that are, are living in his heart and recognizing what he's doing and recognizing how he's moving and you know Matt and I have said this a lot in many Facebook lives you know not looking at at yesterday and what was you know because God's doing a new thing so being in a place of okay God what are you doing? Like, I actually want to hear what you're doing. And I was saying to you, Matt, before that yesterday, I'm sitting at my my on my um my couch having a coffee, looking out the window at my garden. So beautiful. And the day before, I had all these beautiful flowers. Right, that was so beautiful. And I was sitting there, yes, the day before yesterday, admiring these flowers. I sit there yesterday with my coffee, and the gardener had just been, and I looked out my garden, and I'm like, oh. <gasps> He cut all the buds off my flowers. <laughs> and I had this moment where I'm like, he's just pruned my flowers. And I felt the Holy Spirit tap me on the shoulder. And I felt like he said to me, Lana, right now, he said, in this kind of moment, there is a pruning that's taking place, but the pruning is actually for the fruitfulness that's coming, right? It's 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 like it's not a bad thing. This is a good thing, the pruning, the refining, the cleansing. But in the moment, I was like, oh, my beautiful flowers have been cut off, but they've been cut off so that they can produce more so that they can they can flourish more and so i wanted to just encourage some of you that may feel like wow like things are shifting and changing and things are being cut back and and oh my goodness i'm feeling a bit nervous i want to encourage you that as you go into the garden with him as you're in that place of simplicity as you're in that sila moment of that pause that's upon us right now that God is actually preparing so that as we're aligned with him, we move into more. Like it's actually a really beautiful moment right now in our places of intimacy with God, of encountering him in ways that we haven't before. So, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I've just been watching some of the comments sort of fly up the side of the screen there, Lana, and um, there's been a, a conversation happening. There's a guy by the name of Jonathan speaking about Christianity being a religion. Oh, yeah. um, it's such an interesting concept for us, even in sort of navigating this time and season as well. Um, I think there's a massive difference between a religion and a relationship. Uh, and I think as far as the East is from the West is the capacity that I actually put that into uh, as well. Uh, religion is, for me, mankind's idea of trying to understand God and practice the ways of God. Yeah. The relationship is what he has actually called us into, which is exactly what you're saying. Yeah. And so each of us have pruning, uh, and we talk about that as a metaphor, as if it's nice, but uh, I've not yeah. actually ever really enjoyed that process. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Um, it's not something that I run to the Father and say, please prune something yeah. today. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, is it's the effects after the pruning. That's it's right. like uh, they, they prune for more life. Uh, and when something gets heavily pruned back, you look at it and you go, man, they've destroyed that bush. Yeah. And the father's there as the gardener going, no, I ain't destroyed it. That's I'm right. preparing it for more life. I'm preparing it for more fruit. I'm preparing it for more of me. I'm preparing it to graft other things into it. And it's the father who designed it who, who knows how to do it. And so, again, if this is a season for you guys where you're feeling uh, that you've been pruned back, uh, just also understand the power of the word of God because the Bible tells us now that fruit happens 12 months a year from the trees of life that you guys are. So even if you've pruned back, it doesn't mean you're in a fruitless season. It just means that the Father is doing something to create more fruit from you. 
And so, again, allow yourself to be loved on by the people that God has raised up around you. And I'm a massive believer that God raises up the right people at the right time around you. And so, like, even for this fee for Lana and I to step into your life just for a short moment, uh, then it's this place of God just speaking into your life through to other random humans on the planet that just have a heart for hearing the voice of God and passing that on and just knowing that we are about relationship. We are about the Father heart. We're... Uh, religion at times is such a difficult thing for people to navigate because they have such clear ideas of what religion means uh, and such poor ideas on what relationship means as well. And so I just, I think the seller moment, and again, I'll keep on saying that. I might even steal that from you, Lana, if that's okay. <laughs> Feel free. I, I just think that's just such a powerful word to drop into our, our, our world right now. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. Yeah, well, I encourage you guys to really just, if anything else, just, if sorry, if nothing else, just come back to that place uh, in the garden this week. Like, you know, turn the TV off, like the, the media off. I'm not saying don't keep up to date with what's happening, but don't allow that to be the main source of what you're feeding on. And just come back to the garden and just invite the Holy Spirit to come and and ask him god what are you what are you saying right now for my life what are you doing god align me refine me cleanse me anything that needs to be pruned god i invite you to come and do that because like you said matt you know it's it's the effects afterwards um, and i think that it's important right now as the people of god that we keep a heavenly perspective that uh that we really make sure that that we're in a place where we are, we're seated like in the heavenly places where we're hearing and seeing what God is saying and, and living from that place rather than living from, you know, the chaos that's that's happening in the earth. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's really a, it's a crazy time, but it's an exciting time. It's exciting mm. because of what God is doing. So, uh, oh, somebody downstairs isn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Um, Matt, if you don't have anything else that is on your heart to share, um, if you do, go ahead. Otherwise, would you pray? Would you mind praying for yeah. everybody watching? Yeah, absolutely. So just as we come to that time of prayer too, I just want to remind you of a season in the Bible where Jesus was arrested and all the disciples went into fear and panic. That's right, yeah. Um, and there's this concept inside of Scripture where we see this is not an uncommon thing when circumstances affect our world that actually shake us to the core. And for the disciples, every single one of them, uh, as what's recorded in Scripture, fled. Mm. Um, the beautiful thing about Jesus is even if we flee, even if we re react and respond to fear, these aren't the places that he leaves us in. We have a saviour who runs after us and we have a saviour who join, uh, calls us back in. And so in the, the Gospels, we see all the disciples flee in fear and panic. And all of a sudden, across the that, they start being drawn back to the foot of the cross. Mm, yeah. uh, and there's Jesus, even before he dies, speaking to the apostles and to Mary uh, that are down, down there. But then the next time we find him, we find him at the meal table when he turns up and walks through into the room and, and he encourages us, let's sit down and eat. And this is, again, this capacity of Jesus. Even in the places of panic and fear, he has this place of bringing peace into these situations. How does he bring it? He brings presence. He brings himself. And again, each of you guys who are listening carry the presence of the living God within you. He that is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. You carry the presence and the spirit of God with you. And so when you come into these small meetings, when you come and sit down at tables, understand the power of the living God that flows in you. And you remember that when Jesus then was walking up by the Sea of Galilee and Peter's out there fishing and Peter's miserable because he doesn't know what to do and and uh, all of a sudden he sees Jesus on the on the shore and he jumps out of the boat and he swims to the edge and he can't believe it. And what does Jesus do? He brings revelation to Peter at the meal yeah. table again. Yeah. And he does it by inviting him. He doesn't yeah. criticise him. He doesn't condemn him for denying him. The question he asks Peter is the very question that is placed on our hearts. Do you love me? Yeah. And three times Jesus is called, calls Peter into a conversation that looks like relationship. It doesn't look anything like religion. It looks a whole bunch like relationship where he calls him to the table to sit down and to see the heart. And so in that place, the Father is then calling us right now to come and sit with him, stand with him, flow in the power of him and understand the presence of God that you actually carry inside of your life. It's so far greater than he that is in the world. But yeah, so powerful. That's I awesome. <laughs> so. Oh. Are we good? Is there anything you wanted to say then, Lana? No, 
no, I was just concurring. That's such a powerful, powerful word. That's so right. Yeah. Yeah. Really just nice. again, revival happens at dinner tables. So great. It happens in relationship. And it's again, it's this place where I just can't, um, I just can't get off this topic. It's just so much on my heart that love is seen best when we do dinner together. And it's in those places where we can actually have conversation that goes way past whether the weather was nice today and we can get into the heart stuff that we're actually walking through and speaking through and we can understand the thoughts and the dreams that we've been having as well. Yeah, that's so good. So good. It's such a powerful place. It's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah so good. Wow. Well, would you pray, would you mind praying for us, Matt, before we? I would love to. Yeah, sorry. To. Sorry, I was hesitant. I thought my, my computer froze. So I was a bit like, oh, hang on. We're all good. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're back. Okay, let's pray together. You know, Father, I just want to say thank you for a moment in time where we can stop. And we're around the planet and we can connect together to know that we are bound together by love and love alone. I thank you for your love that is so far greater and so far bigger than fear. And if there is a time in our world and uh, where we need to encounter the perfect love that drives away fear, it is now. And Father, I pray that right now that you'll awaken your love in each of our hearts uh, to show us how far much, how far greater your love is than whatever the spirit of this world can offer us. I pray, Father, for your love to flow over families, over marriages. I pray for it to flow over finances and jobs right now. I pray it will flow into places of brokenness and hurt, uh, places of fear and panic. And I pray, Father, for your love to bring a presence of safety, grace, peace, of understanding. Uh, Father, I, I want to pray uh, for uh, uh, the ceasing of a coronavirus that's affected the world and believing Jesus, like when you prayed for a centurion servant, you didn't have to be right with someone who has the disease to heal them. You could speak it from what it, where it's at. And so, Father, I want to pray for a few hundred people that are gathered together right now, that as we pray, Father, that the coronavirus will find a place of healing and, and, uh, and uh, eradication. And uh, so I pray for those who have been affected by it, Father, physically, bring healing into their lives and their bodies and drive the sickness from it. Mm -hmm. I pray for those who have been affected by it socially, Jesus, that you'll raise up others right now to, to connect, uh, to, to come into communication with, to stand with, uh, and to love on. And I pray, Father, that your love today will overflow in ways that we have not yet seen, hoped, dreamt, thought, or imagined. And that today, this very day, we can declare fullness over lives and homes and hearts and marriages. Father, I thank you for Lana and Kevin and the boys and just what a, a blessing and an honour it is uh, for them to, to share your heart, your word, your voice with the, with the planet. And I pray, Father, for an upcoming book that they're releasing. Jesus, may your voice be so powerful and echoing through it. Mm -hmm. But, Lord, I just thank you for you are the God of all things and we just sit and we in a cellar moment. We rest and we wait upon you. And that as we rest and wait, we'll be mounted up on the wings of an eagle to soar. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, can I ask just for people that um, may want to, uh, you know, get the podcast from Haberfield or, yeah. um, you know, anything, keep up to date how can, with you, how can they do that? Absolutely. So Haberfield Baptist Church, so it's H-A-B-E-R-F-I-E-L-D. Uh, maybe one of my friends on this feed could just um, tag it there in the comments um you can find an email address on there for me um our youtube stuff and so sermons that i'm preaching and teachings i'm giving are on there i'm doing also um online prophetic mentoring i'm calling it um this year has been a very busy start to the year so i haven't been able to do as much as i planned but now because things are changing and mm -hmm. um uh, there's going to be more stuff to be doing online. So if this is something that interests you and something yeah. you'd like to invest your time in, uh, you feel free to shoot us an email and we'll get back to you in due course. And um, but yeah, so if you, yeah, that's 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 me. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, I was going to type in Haverfield Baptist Church, but I can't. My comments actually aren't working. Oh, there we go. Somebody's typed it there. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah. 
awesome. So yeah, um, I encourage you guys to go and just um, search Haberfield Baps and uh, or Baptist Church. Sorry, that's the Australian. We cut off the end of words. <laughs> Why would we do that? <laughs> Haberfield Baps. Anyway, yep. you know. <laughs> Haberfield Baptist Church. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and really be um, yeah, just connected with these guys and and the Father's heart that's being released, as you can clearly see. You know. So thank you, Matt. Again, such a joy to do these with you. Yeah, thanks, Lana. Thanks for again. I can't thank you enough for just trusting us in this sort of environment and just knowing that the work of God that's going out through you, Lana, is so profound, and the Spirit of the Lord that is upon you, uh, as people here can testify, uh, your words change lives. I continue to hear that from people who end up in my office, uh, and it's just such a profound outpouring of God's Spirit through you. Thank you, Matt. I'm I'm in awe of of God. Hey, what what He does with with our yes. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Oh, Jonathan, please don't end the stream. <laughs> yep. well, if I, you know, if I didn't have a, a little boy downstairs that is uh, clearly wanting mummy, <laughs> I would hang around for a little bit longer. But yeah. anyway. All right, guys. Hey, should, should we should we say that we're still planning on doing a conference, Lana, in July in in, yes. in Sydney? Yeah, let, yeah. At, at this stage, so Lana and I are going to be doing a conference in Sydney. Yes. Um, with everything that's happening, we're researching the ways of doing some of that sort of stuff online. Um, so stay tuned, and there's more yet to come. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's going to be really exciting. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled about that. So yeah. cool. All right, guys. Well, we uh, we thank you for joining us today. Lots of love to you all. Thanks for um, all of your comments. Again, uh, we try and kind of keep an eye on them. You see us looking back and forward. But uh, thank you for your feedback. And uh, we just pray that this broadcast really blessed you today. So, all right. Well, have a, uh, a good day. And uh, we will talk to you guys later. Okay. See ya. See ya.